Hey guys, my name, is, my name is Max and welcome to Simple Biology. Today we're going to be talking about meiosis. Now, at the end of our last unit, we, we had a video called mitosis. And of course, mitosis and meiosis sound very similar, and in fact, they're almost identical processes, except for a couple major details. Now, meiosis is the process by which normal diploid cells, diploid meaning that they have two of each chromosome, uh, can divide in order to form haploid cells, which are known as gametes. And these gametes will then fuse uh, to fertilize each other in order to form a zygote, which will develop into the next organism, their offspring. And so meiosis is the way that um, you'll be producing these gametes in order to reproduce. So that's why meiosis is so important to life. Now, before we get into how meiosis works, there's one important process within meiosis that really has a strong effect on how it functions. This is known as crossing over. Now, crossing over gets its name from the way it looks. You can kind of see that it, it just looks like it's crossing over. I, I don't know. Essentially, there are going to be two non-sister chromatids um, from homologous chromosomes. If you remember, homologous chromosomes are chromosomes that uh, code for all of the same genes. Two non-sister chromatids, meaning they're not identical, but they're homologous, they're going to exchange certain segments of those chromosomes. Now, crossing over occurs at what are known as chiasmata, and uh, they're known they're known as chiasmata because I think there's some Greek word or something that means X, and so when the chiasmata forms, it looks a little bit like an X, and so that chiasmata is the little section right in the middle, and these also function in holding together the homologous chromosomes in order for meiosis to occur. As a whole, crossing over, you can, or okay, so you can kind of see. At the end of crossing over, there's a little section, in this case two little sections that are uh, exchanged, and they, it can occur at basically random points. So each time, different segments will be, will be exchanged. And because crossing over is occurring, this allows uh, for a huge, uh, hugely greater genetic variability between um, the, the parents and the offspring. If they're just passing on a whole chromosome, then all those genes within the chromosome have to stay together. But since they're exchanging little sections of the chromosomes, uh, they can they can pass on some genes but not others, just by random chance. But of course, all of evolution depends on random chance. So meiosis is split into two like mini phases, known as meiosis one and meiosis two. Each of these phases resembles mitosis. Uh, and in that it has the prophase, the, the metaphase, the anaphase, and all that. Uh, and each of these will be known as either 1 or 2 with Roman numerals. And so we're going to start with meiosis 1 because, of course, it occurs first. Meiosis 1 is the process that separates homologous chromosomes from each other. So you, you saw in, in that first slide how the homologous chromosomes will actually pair up with each other. And this happens during prophase 1. After process, or during prophase one is when that crossing over will occur, and they'll exchange different segments, and uh, will allow for greater genetic versatility. After this, you'll have metaphase one, where all the all the well, actually, so four chromosomes, chrom or all the homologous chromosomes will line up in the middle in metaphase one, and then during anaphase one, um, those sister chromatid those sister chromatids will actually still be. Uh, stuck together. Sister chromatid a cohesion will still remain. So at the end of meiosis 1 you'll have uh, where each of the cells has pairs of sister chromatids. And so uh, of course telophase 1 and cytokinesis result in two haploid daughter cells because uh, they have how, so for example for humans they would have 46 chromatids but only 23 chromosomes which is half the number that they normally had. Haploid is half the number uh, that they would normally have. As we go, we're, go we're going on to meiosis two, where all the same thing happens again, but they're going to separate those sister chromatids. Now, between meiosis one and meiosis two, no uh, further uh, DNA replication is going to occur. So, they ha at this point in time, between the two phases, they have um, a normal amount of DNA but uh, in chromatids instead of chromosomes. But since no further replication is going to occur and the cell is going to split again, they're going to end with half the amount of, uh, of, uh, of DNA, which is going to be important. 
So uh, also because of crossing over, the sister chromatids are actually genetically identical. Let me bring you back to this um, first slide. You can see these are each sister chromatids, but in the tip, they're not actually still identical. There, are, there is a zone where uh, there's differences in their in what genes they have, and so we're still calling them sister chromatids, but there's a little bit of a gray area there. Now, of course, like I said, after meiosis II, uh, you're going to have four haploid daughter cells, uh, still haploid, but now there's uh, each chromosome is one single chromatid, and again, and now there's four instead of just one or if, there, if mitosis had occurred, there would be two. So that's all that we really, we really have for meiosis. Uh, it's really just as simple as that.